Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the Clearview 3 Multifocal IOL by LensTech. This is a segmented bifocal IOL for presbyopia correction. It has an asymmetrical lens design with a distance portion and a near portion. The distance portion is slightly bigger than the near portion. About half the lens optic is dedicated for far vision. There's a transition zone and then there's the remaining 42% of the lens which is dedicated to near vision. This design is intended to help patients see far and near without glasses. Here is a real patient sharing his feedback. Now we're gonna test your far vision. All right, so we have a chart over here. Are you able to read uh, those? Yes. Read them for me, please. F, Z, B, D, E. All right, can you read those? O, F, L, C, T. Good job, how about these? A, B, E, O, T, F. All right. How about this last line? T Z V E O L. All right, very good. You got um, what five out of six? That's fantastic. So that's twenty twenty. You just missed one letter, but that's very good so far. Now I want to test your reading. All right, so cover that right eye as well. Okay, and so you have this. That's about twenty inches away. Hold it a little bit closer. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Now, how low can you go on this chart? What's the smallest one you can read? Four, two, six, seven, three, eight, or nine. Say that one more time. Um, four, two, six, seven, three, nine. Wow, that's J one plus. That's really incredible. That's that's really good. That's really good. I'm impressed. Now, how about let's try intermediate. So, cover that right eye. Um, hold that card a little bit further now. A little bit more. Yeah, right there. All right, and now let's see how far down you can go. What's the lowest line you can read there? Uh, I'll probably read this one, three, seven, four, two, five, eight. All right, and that one is the J2 line. Uh, that is really good. That's really, really impressive. Fantastic, right. that's really good. Overall, are you happy with this lens? Do you, or do you have any regrets about this lens so far? in your not vision? Not at all. Not at all. So if you had to go back in time and have the surgery again, um, would you choose the same lens? Absolutely. That's fantastic. Well, congratulations. I mean, I wasn't your surgeon, but I think uh, your surgeon did a great job and the lens is working really well for you. And I hope that other patients can experience the same quality vision that you have. Um, and your feedback after the surgery is so helpful for them. So thank you for letting us share your experience. I really appreciate yeah, that. Not a problem. Here we are at the slit lamp and you can see the transition zone between the far segment and near segment. This is with the eye dilated. When the eye is not dilated, this lens looks like a monofocal lens. I could barely tell the difference. It is more apparent on retinoscopy. So here I am putting my camera through the retinoscope and you can see a much more prominent distinction between the distant and near segment. LensTech may not be as popular as Alcon or J&J, &J, but LensTech is a unique company because they make the equipment such as the lathes that cut and shape most of the world's lens implants, including those lens implants made by the other big brands. This manufacturing know-how naturally led LensTech to make their own lenses. The thing that stands out to me is that LensTech lenses come in quarter diopter steps instead of half diopter steps like all other lens brands. This is a significant advantage when trying to select the appropriate strength lens implant for a patient. Like shoes, lenses normally come in half size increments. Sometimes a patient might fall right in between two sizes. LensTech offering their lenses in quarter size steps shows how their production quality and tolerance for error is so tight. One downside of the clear view is that it doesn't correct astigmatism. So if you have moderate or high astigmatism, then this lens would not be best for you, unless you undergo another procedure to reduce your astigmatism. Also, since it's made from a hydrophilic acrylic material, It'll need YAG laser capsulotomy more frequently when compared to other multifocal lenses. Approximately 50% of patients will need a YAG capsulotomy. It also has a plate design 
which requires a larger corneal incision than other multifocal lenses. The panoptics and synergy lenses are diffractive multifocal eye wells with a symmetrical design, whereas the lens tech clear view is a refractive multifocal eye well with an asymmetric design. This side of the lens and that side of the lens are different. The way in which light is sent and focused onto the retina is very different between these two technologies. The clear view can produce good quality vision, but it's more dependent on pupil size. LensTech does not recommend implanting it in patients with small pupils. They recommend pupils three millimeters or greater in size, even in a light room. This does raise a question about the long-term stability of vision, because in some people, the pupil size and position of the pupil change slightly over their lifetime, and therefore the vision can change. In what orientation should a surgeon implant the lens? Of course, the lens should be centered on the visual axis, that's most important, but both the distance and the near segment need to be close to the pupil. If not, the vision for the segment not near the pupil will suffer. But where should we position the reading segment? On the bottom, like a pair of bifocal glasses? Unlike bifocal glasses, the direction you look to read doesn't matter or shouldn't matter. The lens will move with the eye movement. So if you look left, the lens moves. If you look up, the lens moves. This is true for all multifocal lens implants. You should be able to look down and read, look up and read, right and read, left and read. As for lens rotation, LensTech recommends placing the near segment at the infranasal part of the pupil for a couple reasons. First, when you read something, your pupil constricts and the constriction usually occurs towards the infranasal direction for most people. Second, they position the reading segment infranasally in the FDA study, so they wanna keep things consistent. But naturally, the pupil is not perfectly centered in everyone and its size and position can change slightly over time. If the pupil shifts, the distance or near vision would change a little bit, one segment getting stronger and the other segment getting weaker. Some surgeons have suggested to place the reading segment in one eye infranasally, but in the opposite orientation for the other eye, like super temporarily. That way, if there's a pupil shift, you can still maintain distance and near vision with both eyes open. Of course, one eye would get stronger for near, the other eye would get stronger for distance, but you'll still be able to see. The quality of each eye would, of course, be different. What's the summary of the clear view? The clear view overall has a much higher satisfaction rate with intermediate and near vision when you compare it to a basic monofocal lens. But the overall satisfaction of far vision compared to a monofocal is a bit worse. Basic monofocals give better satisfaction for far vision. The clear view, just like a monofocal, does not reduce astigmatism. Also, the lens is not without dysphotopsias. More patients with the Clearview lens saw glare, halos, starbursts, as well as ghosting, compared to a basic monofocal uh, lens group. Some basic monofocal patients also saw these dysphotopsias, but, but not nearly as much. It's not zero, though, with a basic monofocal. These dysphotopsias generally occur much more with multifocal IOLs. Would the Clearview provide better contrast sensitivity or better night vision than a Synergy or Panoptics? That's a great question, and I'm interested to see head-to-head -head comparisons in the future. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.